Hi, it's Kat from Berlin and in this video we're going to quickly analyze a quote from Women of Troy by Euripides. So let's take some notes on the quote. My name is Poseidon. I am a god. I built this city with Apollo. I built it and I have been defeated. Now I too shall desert famous Troy. In this Don Taylor version of the play, the quote appears on page 5 and is said by Poseidon, the Greek god of the sea. Why is this quote worth taking notes on? Number one, because it's the opening line of the play. Now, if you can imagine yourself as an audience member physically going to watch this play, when the play starts and the first actor walks on stage, he or she has everyone's attention. The very first line in and of itself really sets the stage for the rest of the play. And this one by Poseidon beautifully introduces many themes that concern Euripides all at once. My top two that I'm going to go into a little bit more detail about are the themes of gods and war as related to this quote. So if you haven't already gotten your bed bank open, pause this video, open it up and we will take some notes on Woman of Troy in there. Bear Bank is a free application to take your book quotes and notes in and it's a much more efficient way of revising and preparing for essays and exams because once you build up all your quotes and notes, you can easily retrieve the ones you need for your essay theme or when revising on a certain idea by clicking on the relevant tags. This is especially useful because as students, we want to go into assessments and exams with what I call high utility quotes, which means quotes that can be applied to multiple themes or ideas, like this one by Poseidon. Bear Bank allows you to tag, my name is Poseidon, I built this city, and I too shall desert famous Troy with more than one theme, so that when you're revising for a piece on war or worship, this quote will continue to come up across the various themes, and each time you interact with it, you embed it into your muscle memory. Okay, so without further ado, let's start taking some notes on the importance of this quote. Poseidon's opening line perfectly captures how fickle the gods are. Fickle means changeable, which translates to, you really can't trust these Greek gods to have your back. One moment the gods like Poseidon and Apollo are passionately in Troy's corner, and the next, when the people of Troy well and truly need them, Poseidon flees. And the godliest of all the gods, Zeus, is not responding to any of the women's prayers. Zeus is literally ghosting them. Look at Poseidon's actual words in this opening monologue. He speaks affectionately about the city that he claims to have a particular love for and tells his audience that he had a personal role in laying every stone in the city. Now, if that was me, if I had literally laid every brick of my house and adored it, if it came under attack, I'm not sure I'd be as resigned as Poseidon is. I mean, if I had godly powers and I had a magic trident and someone sent a Trojan horse into my house, I wouldn't go, ah, oh, that sucks. I love the house, but I'm on to the next thing. So this opening passage well and truly establishes how easily the gods can shift their interests. And as we see later in the play by Athene, how easily they shift their alliances. Now on that, it can be argued that because of the gods' vanity, the one allegiance that they would never shift will be that to themselves. So while Poseidon built Troy with his friend Apollo and it's been completely decimated by the Greeks, men are butchered, temples desecrated, women raped and children are about to be thrown off battlements. That's pretty horrific. The Trojans are killed and wiped out in the most horrific of ways and yet from the safety of wherever he is looking over Troy, Poseidon makes it all about himself. He says, I am defeated. When I'm flicking through the pages of the play and reading about the screaming, the steps being slippery with the blood of Trojans, women being enslaved, I am a little bit disgusted about the vanity of the gods. This vanity explains a lot when Athene almost on a dime switches allegiances with the Greeks to being against the Greeks. Not because the Greeks have behaved so brutally towards other men and to women and to children, but because her temple was desecrated. So this quote by Poseidon introduces to audiences the fickle as well as the very vain nature of the gods. Our analysis is not done yet because this play is not about the gods 
as vain as they are and would very much like to think that the whole play or the whole world revolves around them, note that the gods only appear at the start of the play and are never to be seen again. Students already know that the gods are cavalier and that they're vain. The fact that the gods never appear again is a message to audiences about how they need to live their lives and how they ought to behave. Earlier, I said that Poseidon's cavalier attitude means that he cannot be relied on to have your back through thick and thin. And that's essentially the message that Euripides was trying to impress on his male Greek audience all the way back in 415 BC. And this is when author views and values becomes extremely important. Euripides presented his play at the Dionysus Festival during a time when the Greeks were really pumped and getting ready to yet go onto another blood shedding mission. The Greeks were recently victorious in their invasion and genocide of the Melians in Melos. So the mood was euphoric, even triumphant, and now the amped to do it again in Syracuse in Sicily. So using or having this context in mind, Euripides was pointing out to his male Athenian audience, who at the time believed in the gods, that they could not rely on the gods to help them repeat their version of success. They could not rely on the gods to grant them safe passage in their battle. And in this way, even though Euripides' play, Women of Troy, did not win at the Dionysus festival that year, Euripides really had the last word. This play has endured throughout time from 415 BC till today. And really, in hindsight, the Greek mission to Syracuse and Sicily was an absolute disaster. Showing the fickleness of the gods was one way, one tool that Euripides used in this enduring play to impress upon his war-loving audience that war can be very, very awful, especially if you're on the losing side. War is a gamble, and there are no guarantees that the Greeks will always be on the winning side and even if victorious, there is a moral defeat in engaging in such wanton violence. And so what I really love about Euripides is that in such a short span of time or pages, Euripides is really touching on very deep themes about what it means to live a good life. And charging off to war for the purposes of vanity, revenge, lust or bloodlust is not the definition of a good life. We've covered quite a fair bit today. I hope that you've been taking down those notes in Bear Bank. If you want even more detailed analysis on this quote, along with 49 other quotes from Women of Troy plus detailed analysis, head to bearlearn.com. On bearlearn.com, you can get daily quotes sent to you from Women of Troy with detailed analysis of each quote for 50 consecutive days. If you don't want the analysis, but want the quotes only so that you can build up your own analysis, you can get the daily quotes only sent to you for 50 days straight for free. On top of that, if you want to get the daily quotes or the daily quotes plus analysis put directly into your Bear Bank all at once, don't forget to add the Add to Bear Bank account option on the website to your cart and check out. If this video has helped you in any way, it would massively help me if you would like this video and subscribe to the Bear Learn channel. Good luck with your assessments and your exam. As always, be educated and read.